the precious name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It's a great honor to be here this evening. I believe that it's a strategic time in the calendar of God for most of you. And I'm persuaded in my spirit that um, most of you are already hungry to receive from the Lord. Tonight, we'll just explain a few things and then we'll spend time to pray. When I come back tomorrow, I'll do a teaching. There are many things that we know and we interact with cognitively, but they don't have tangible impact and manifestation in our lives. And it becomes a crisis for the believer. He knows so much, he says so much, but there are no results in his life. And when the spirits come to check you out, they are not so impressed with what you know. They are impressed with what you can show. And therefore it behoves us to give ourselves completely to the protocol of the Spirit that makes for manifestation. And one of the most potent is prayer. So tonight we will pray before we teach tomorrow again and do impartation. I know a lot of you are interested in utterance, but it will not profit you much. Except your spirit sustains that disposition where you can receive from the Lord. Can you lift your hands toward heaven as you talk to the Lord? Just whisper from the depth of your heart to Jesus. Most of you are ministers of the gospel. Most of you are aware of what God wants to do in this season. Most of you are already traveling preachers. But no matter who we are in the kingdom, every time we have the privilege of fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit, our ranking, our stature, our records no longer count. So he said the 20 and 4 elders, they lay on the floor, they cast their crown, and they cry holy. Because when we come before the monarch of Zion, our ranking no longer counts. It is the disposition of worship we can sustain that determines the most we can make from that environment. So talk to the Lord from your heart. It's good to have expectations. It's very important to have expectations. But beyond expectations, your attitude in the presence is more important. You may be full of expectation, but your attitude in the presence may be wrong. And if your attitude in the presence is wrong, your expectations will count for nothing. Can you display the attitude of worship? And cause your spirit man to ascend and receive from the Lord. Expectations are important, but they are not as important as attitude in the present. What drives us to the presence of God is the passion for Him. But it's important what we do when we get into the presence. So that His reality can be communicated. His essence can be communicated. His life can be communicated. His power can be communicated. I want to tell you something. What you know before you came here doesn't count. Unless you didn't come to interface with the presence of God. He said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion that appear before the Lord. So when you appear before the Lord, what you wear before you came is no longer important. We migrate and we go deeper. We ascend higher. So that we may touch. Uh, the 20 and 4 elders, they've been in the presence for ageless aeons. But every time the presence of God appears they go flat before him they know that their antecedents don't count their ranking don't count 
Their persons don't count. When he shows up, every other thing ends. Attitude in the presence. Go ahead and talk to the Lord. It's not too important what the preacher has to tell you. By all means, hear the voice of God. By all means, by all means. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. You are seated on the throne. And so, eternal Father, we come before you even tonight. We ask that, Lord, you will not make it difficult for us to access your presence. Reveal yourself to us as you are, Lord. We make demands, even in the very heights of heaven, that we may drink of the wine that sponsors alignment. The angels in heaven, that stewards the move of the Spirit, we ask that, Lord, they may come among us tonight. That the hearts of men may be jacked up. That weaknesses will be swallowed up. Your face be revealed to us. Your ways be made known. That the essence of your being may be imparted. So that we will live here, Lord, carrying your presence to our aeons, affecting our world positively. Causing an importance of your kingdom. A fortress of your kingdom. Help us tonight, Father. And let all the glory be ascribed unto your holy name. In the precious name of Jesus Christ. You may be seated. God bless you. I want to share with us something that will define and give perspective to our bodies and the reason for our living in the world at a time like this. A point came in my life when by the mercies of God, I began to sustain a hunger for God and began to pursue after the Lord. But somehow, I noticed that, I don't know if it's natural with everybody, I noticed that it was so easy to become religious. So I pursued after God genuinely. But the more I pressed, the more I became like the old man. I came to the Lord, I surrendered everything to Him. I felt the love of God, the tangibility of His presence. And I joined myself to the company of believers. I began to seek the ways of God and pressing after the Lord. But I discovered over time that the more I pursued after God and followed the people of God, the more I became like who I was before I came to him. So I noticed I was most spiritual the day I gave my heart to Christ. But thereafter, I started seeing a decline. The passion for the Lord, the purity of the zeal for the Lord began to die. I started noticing angular shift in every direction. At some point, it became about preaching. I didn't have bodies for souls. At some point, it became about influence. I didn't have a heart for the Father. At a point, it became about popularity. It became about titles. And I began to wonder what was going wrong. Because when I came to God, the first thing I noticed was I relinquished everything that was of the world. When I came to the Lord, nothing mattered. Everything was about God. Was about God. How come now that I'm surrendered to the Lord, the more I advance, the more I became 
like everything I used to be. I now realize there are different kinds of infirmities that are planted in the path of spiritual progress. And until a believer is helped of the Holy Spirit, he may run away from the world and become the son of hell in the kingdom. So Jesus said to the Pharisees, he said, you traverse land and sea to make a proselyte. And then you make him twice the child of hell. So I discovered the greatest battle of alignment, the greatest battle of right standing with God was in the clan of God's people. I discovered it was easier to convert a man that knew nothing about God than to meet a believer that is taught church language. He become an expert of church cliché. He can say a lot of things, yet having no manifestation of the truths that are captured in the canons that he communicate. No transformation, no consciousness of God, no manifestation of the power of God, yet a talker about the kingdom. And when I check the life of Jesus, check the life of the apostles, check the life of even the patriarchs that walked with God, when the Holy Spirit had not come, I discovered it was completely different from my experience. And the worst thing I also noticed again was that it was simple to settle there and remain like that. Where everybody knows you as the big brother that loves Jesus, that does everything in church, where you begin to gain relevance in the church, in the house of God, and then everybody looks up to you, and then you have to encourage them and talk boldly and make them feel that you know the Lord now experientially. But deep within, you notice that even the people that give their heart to Christ a week in the kingdom are most their standing is more right with God than you. You notice that people who are young in the faith come to you and begin to share testimonies and you know that is not your experience. Yet you are their senior. You are their big brother. You are their covering. And now understood that the devil has a way of masking truth from believers. So the more they go after the Lord, the more they are drawn into darkness. So I made up my mind to begin to study after people that walked with God. I had mastered all the doctrines. The 12 pillars of redemption. I could communicate it and quote a thousand scriptures. But the reality of God was far from my borders. So I settled down with Jesus. Because the truth is that these things may not count so much until the challenges of life begin to reveal your standing with God. You come to a point where you become so callous that the word of God doesn't move you anymore. So you hear about sin, you say, well... You hear about the obvious lack of God's presence and power in your life, you say, well... Until the circumstances of life begins to reveal to you that all the programs you attended have no result. Until the circumstances of life begins to reveal to you that all the hands that were laid on you have no manifestation. Until the circumstances of life begins to prove to you that all the scriptures you quote have no implication on the existential matters of your life that is the very cardinal reason why you run to God not your soul it tra is transformed not the consciousness of God is quickened not circumstances averted but you are there quoting scriptures and I walked in this path for long until I began to see things that the life I have chosen should affect and it was not being affected a lot of people even at this point drift into secret sins so we can come and organize a powerful program like this and the moment you go home you go back to the chains of darkness you can come and lead the prayers and you are now fluent in tongues you know how to meet and mingle and join the scriptures in order to make meaning and everybody hear you they say wow that was when i stopped praying that god give me people's bodies because when i checked out my life i discovered most of the times when i was crying and praying it was not because i was loving god Sometimes I was rising from where I fell. I now realize it is foolishness to pray for somebody else's body. Because you can see the brother praying and crying. You now say, Lord, give me the body of brother A. That guy just came out from immorality. 
and now realize that many believers are liars. We are perfect hypocrites. We mimic the life of God so excellently, but within we are decayed. If two, three believers will be honest with you, you will realize that we have not known a bit about the life of God that is on our inside. You can meet a company of 100 believers and 90 to 95 of them are bound by darkness. But we come together and we act as if all is well. But it was not so in the days of the apostles. So when we look at subjects like emergence, it's not just about the rise of people that can speak in tongues. It's not just a rise of people that are radical on the street, but they are not radical in their spirit. Because it's possible to be radical on the street and on your campuses. Meanwhile, you are recruiting people into a league of people who are in bondage to darkness. The only thing is that you have perfected the act of hiding it. So 10 of us can say we are taking this campus. Meanwhile, all of us are bound by one thing or the other. So we recruit people. I invited a friend of mine when we started. And when he came to church, suddenly this lady's phone rang. And she forgot to put the phone on silent that day. And what rang was Terry G. My friend almost died. <laughs> he almost fainted. The sister who was one of the phone rang. The next thing was Terry G. So everybody's phone is passworded with patterns that you will need to study engineering for five years before you are able to unlock. See, that was when tongues I, think I realized that there's a difference in speaking in tongues and speaking with tongues <laughs> you will never see their phones unlocked nobody touches their phone Even if you hold their phone for 5 minutes they are uncomfortable what, what are you checking what are you checking that <laughs> ah! glory to the father you are seated on the throne i came to church i taught the people that knew scriptures god has helped them so i began to attach myself to them when i came close to their life i discovered they were stinking i now knew that oh 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 putting scripture is not the cure you know this thing that you come and you see the brother who is always they say they want to do this the brother stands up very coordinated and then they have a way of standing holy you know there's a way holy men behave <laughs> holy men of old they speak as they were moved by the spirit of god <laughs> so holy men walk when they come to church mm. but when they pick their phone and they go to the corner to talk oh boy what did they have don't worry they come now now we go through that <laughs> holy men have a dual personality there's a way they live in church but you can't come close to them in their houses. No one that it became difficult for them to make friends. When they come to church, you think it's because of the body of God in their heart. So you see them. Because if you come around their life, you will see different dimension of Hades emitting with so much energy out of their spirit. That was when I discovered again that there were many psychological stones that they were using in church to cover cases of immorality. I realized that pastors that succeeded were very good psychologists. So if you are not an expert psychologist, for example, you can't manage the choir. The choir is for psychologists. If you can't manage, if you hear the things that happen, you go and cry. If you are not careful, you lose your faith. I now realized that this thing is a game of spirits. <laughs> Men are only invited to participate in their game. So if your tonguing does not bring you to a point of fraternity with the Holy Spirit, what you are doing is kindergarten. Go and relax. I now realize that tongue in itself is useless, except it is able to bring you into the womb of life and the essence of the Holy Spirit becomes an effulgence of your manifestation. I realized that scriptures were not meant to educate. That was when certain things that Jesus said, I began to see the weight. He said, the words I speak unto you. They are spirit. They are life. You may hear those words and be educated in the process. But education was not the reason why I communicated the way I communicated. Every word that came out of my spirit was a gateway into certain dimensions in God. 
So when Jesus talked righteousness, it was because he wanted you to walk through that pathway and begin to experience righteousness as your lifestyle. Righteousness for him was not a strategy of doctrinal education. Righteousness for him was a gate that will deliver you from the stronghold of iniquity. And now realize how to interact with prayer and with the word of God beyond the things we were taught. So for many years I stopped praying. And up to today, any time I notice there is an angular shift in my soul, I leave the altar. Because I realize the altar where we represent God from, it is the hottest spot where the devil uses to enslave people. The altar. The first time I met Apostle Aram Osai, I was like, what are you doing this people to talk? Wait, what are they saying? I heard him the first day, I just admired the way he spoke. But when I got to my couldn't sleep. I didn't remember he quoted any scripture and said John chapter this. I didn't remember anyone. But when I went to my couldn't sleep, I now realize that there are men that have mingled with reality until they communicate life and spirit. They don't talk to your head, they talk to your heart. So when Peter spoke, they didn't remember what he said, but they only said, men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? Go and check that scripture. He didn't mention salvation. How did they know that he was talking about salvation? How did they realize that they were in darkness when the man just gave them a narrative of the life of Jesus? Energy became more important to me than intelligence. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 2 8, he said, For that we have loved you, we are affectionately desirous of you. We did not only communicate the gospel to you, but the substance of our soul. And I knew what Peter meant when he said, Our judgment will be stricter, we that are preachers of the gospel. I saw the reason why I went for certain programs and I came home with lust. I saw the reason why I listened to some messages instead of hunger in my spirit. I went outside and every lady I saw, I wanted to look at her two times. I realized that the gospel is not an educational infrastructure. The gospel is a communication of life and spirit. And there are certain things that men must do to themselves to sustain the capacity to communicate life. I saw why Jesus never called us preachers, he never called us saints, he never called us believers, he called us witnesses. A whole lot of things began to make sense to me. And that was when I died to cliches. I died to excitement. So I can come for a meeting, everybody's jumping, hey, hey, I'll just sit down and be watching. This thing that this preacher did, why did he do it? I now began to see flesh in most of the things we do on the altar. I discovered more than 70% of the things we do are not inspired by the Holy Spirit. I now knew the meaning of what Jesus meant when Peter will speak in one minute. He said, flesh and blood have not revealed this to you. And in another minute he said, get deep behind me Satan. I saw that trafficking was possible. A man can be ministering under the anointing and is communicating to you possibilities from Hades at the same time as educating you about God. I knew what the Bible meant when he said, guard your heart with all diligence. I saw why many people who were passionate about God became weaker and weaker. So I began to discern the reason why I was going backward when I was pursuing after God. I said this to tell you that big meetings will not change you. Big men of God that you meet will not change you. It is the everyday decision you make to commit yourself to the infrastructure that God himself has put in place that will change your life. That was when I took up fasting as a lifestyle. That was when I took up prayer as a lifestyle. That was when I studied the word of God for myself. I listened to so many men, I could score their messages. I attended many meetings. I went to meetings where people stood up from wheelchairs and were strolling as if they were newborn babes. I went to meetings where people stood up from wheelchairs, their legs were bent. The man of God came and held the bent bone and straightened it. But we left those meetings only to talk about those meetings. Nothing happened in our spirit man. And now saw that the way, the reason those men became what they became was what they did with God, not the meetings they attended. You have attended most of the great meetings. Check your life. It should give you wisdom. And these things may not count until crisis begin to hit the borders of your house. I sat down like this. My cousin died. I knew it was not natural. I sat down. My mom died. I knew it was not natural. I sat down. My brother died. I knew it was not natural. I discovered that I was a liar. Because everything I said about the power of God, I didn't know it. 
will come to deceive people to enter into the same gutter where we are where we are lying down. You tell people about the power of God that you have not experienced. And then you say it boldly, and the people follow you foolishly. At the end of the day, both of you are in trouble. Emergence is not a language, it's a manifestation of a life. What do you represent in the spirit? It is not, it has nothing to do about who we are in the territory. It has everything to do about our ranking in the spirit. It has nothing to do about what we know and talk about. It has everything to do with the authority we can command. Feelings are the greatest deception in the corridor of spiritual realities. Emotions will mislead you and you will think so much is happening in your life. When you want to check next time, check with the circumstances you confront and can defy because of who you know. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you reign, you reign, you reign, God, oh, you are mighty on your throne. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. thinking that all things were possible with God they taught me in church that some things are not possible I came to church thinking that when I came to God sin will become a thing of the past they taught me in church that we need to live with sin and manage it from time to time everything I believe from outside when I came to church they defied all of them I used to be afraid of God when I was a sinner I came to church and reverence died when I was in the world I would sin and I would be afraid but I became a believer, I came into the church, and when I sinned, I knew how to comport myself and act as if all is well. They taught me forgiveness, they didn't teach me judgment. They taught me justification, they didn't teach me sanctification. They taught me forgiveness, they didn't teach me holiness. They taught me fin the finished works of Christ, but they didn't teach me the responsibility of the new believer. I began to float like a balloon without a reference. They taught me that the laws were abolished. They never taught me the law of life that is in Christ Jesus. So we came to church and we came for meetings only for excitements. We came to see big men and to celebrate them. We didn't know that we were the project in the hand of God. The reason the apostle is there, the reason the prophet is there, so that you can become who you are in God. Rather, we looked upon these men, celebrated them, and we were far from everything God planned us to be. That was when I knew that the system was failing. And until a man enters into the womb of life for himself, he has deceived himself. You are so excited because you are under 30. Let me assure you, most of the meetings you go for, you shout and cry. When you are 50 years, it will move you again. You will go for those meetings, they will say what they are. Have you not noticed that family men, married men and women, don't hardly fall under the anointing? In these same meetings we go, It's because you are under 30. Wait until you are 50 years old. You will notice you have wasted your life. No proof. Because even the men talking, they only studied and heard a lot of messages. They don't have experience of anything. A man only has a right to teach a dimension of God that himself is a custodian of. You don't know righteousness, you can't teach righteousness. Your doctrine may be accurate, but there will be no support from Zion. The deception in the church is massive. If we take a census now, you'll be amazed how many people are struggling. They have attended all the big meetings. I travel around this country on a weekly basis. I meet many youths. There are meetings we come for, you can't talk. As you enter everywhere, people under the power from the beginning to the end. But you leave the same meeting, masturbators go back as masturbators. You know you have done nothing. The Holy Ghost now reminded me, I saw that many years ago, I saw Michael Jackson's clip. When he was coming to the stadium, people were slain. So I knew there was nothing special about it. Our business is to create a consciousness of God in the hearts of men. Resulting in a transformation in their lives. And a hunger 
to bring them into God so much so that they represent a dimension. If you have been in church for three years and you have not caught any dimension of God nor represented anyone, you may just be on a journey of psyche. And the emotions and the euphoria, I assure you, they will die before you are 40 years old. You are mighty on your throne. You reign. You reign. You reign. You reign. God of you. You are mighty on your throne. Zion's King Kadosh Kadosh You are mighty On your throne When these things began to happen I noticed the only person to pay attention to Is the Holy Spirit But a lot of people don't know him I assure you if we ask here again When was the last time the Holy Ghost spoke to you You'll be shocked Some people heard him three years ago indicators and parameters that we don't check because we were not taught the things that matter when was the last time you heard the holy spirit <laughs> you will not know how wrong you are until the holy ghost begins to whisper into your spirit i enter chapel of redemption the expectation was high the hunger level was intense and as i carried the mic i couldn't hold myself i began to roar and in 15 minutes the hall was on fire and the holy ghost told me you are wrong you are wrong I couldn't come for the meeting the first day, so I needed to make up. <laughs> hey. The utterance was like a rod of fire. The Holy Ghost said, You are wrong, you are wrong. The people that came for this meeting, I want to teach them the way of giving. Their soul is bogus. What you are doing will not help them. It pained me, but I shut down. You know why? The people marking your card, they are not on earth, they are in heaven. <laughs> your report card is not on earth, it's in heaven. <laughs> ah! I went for one meeting. See, you don't know the way. See, there are certain things I want to share. What I'm doing now, I'm just testing the waters to know the depth I should enter into. Because I know some of you came to hear things. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy, he wants to share some mysteries. Mysteries will confuse you if you don't know the Holy Spirit. <laughs> hey! I heard this guy's message. Oh, oh, oh. I left that deception a long time ago. Sometimes you even call your host is disappointed. Because he brought you to come with fire. And when you came, the Holy Ghost is emphasizing on something. Your report card is not with your host. When I saw all of the crises that believers faced, I now discovered there must be something about the life of God that we have not discovered. That was when the Holy Ghost began to teach me the mystery of spiritual sensitivity. I realized that the compass of God for my life was in my spirit. I realize that every man that God calls has a message. The message is not in the Bible. It's locked up in the spirit. The Bible is only an avenue that God gives you to give expression to the message that is locked up in your spirit. I now looked around. I discovered every preacher are saying the same thing but in different ways. Because the compass of their life was in their spirit. And the only way to travel deep enough into your spirit to get that dimension of God was through sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. That was when I noticed that when I came into the kingdom, pursuing knowledge and pursuing men, there was a being in my spirit crying. I never paid attention. And I noticed that's the first crisis of every believer. The Holy Ghost is screaming at you, trying to get your attention, but you are too busy with activities. You are too busy pursuing things, pursuing knowledge, pursuing all kinds of things, until you lose contact with the one that has the compass and the blueprint of your life. I knew that if a man has not come to a point of interacting with the Holy Spirit, everything he does is wrong. Because the Bible said they know not, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness because the foundation of the earth had lost its cause. 
the only one that sustains the original blueprint to redirect you back to the path of your destiny is on your inside i now notice from scripture that what god gave us was called eternal life when the holy ghost downloads eternal life into your spirit the first kind of spiritual education you receive comes from within but most times religion makes us choke that life on the inside and then we try to make up for it from the outside and now notice that is the root of many crises that people have so i went back to the holy spirit and that was when the holy ghost began to teach me the pathway of the emerging of sons in the kingdom the holy ghost began to educate me how that in this kingdom debts relationship are in debts and anything you can command in this kingdom is a direct proponent of the depth of relationship you have and i saw how related with the disciples men who came to him and knew nothing if you heard them sometimes you will wonder how come people are so daft jesus said lazarus is sleeping and thomas said if he's sleeping what do we why are we going there he will wake up <laughs> jesus said okay lazarus is dead they now say let's go and die with him so if somebody dies you die with him <laughs> So I saw that these guys were daft. So they, need, they didn't have any advantage that we don't have. In fact, some of them were more daft than we are. But there was something Jesus introduced them to that made them become champions in their generation. I saw also that as they walked with Jesus, there was a gradual transformation. Beginning from consciousness to transformation and then to manifestation. How did they walk? through this channel until they became exactly like him until a point came when they came to arrest Jesus they could not find out which is him all of them had become replicas which one is Jesus Judas had to give them a sign by kissing Jesus because if you came among them you would not know which is Jesus which is Thomas which is Peter what happened to these guys that were obviously bereft of spiritual intelligence that in a short period of time they could become so much like the master i knew there was an intrinsic protocol that we were not taught and the more we look on people the more we look on things and pursue after things we will never enter into the fullness of our ordination the moment we become like him then our life becomes expression of different dimensions of his reality and then god now drew me to the heavens and i checked and discovered that even the angelic ranking was in that pattern every angel is a representation of different dimensions of god so i knew that mankind and creation in its totality was given the privilege of life to express different dimensions of god so if we are accurate every time we gather if you see the corporate plan then you see jesus rise in our midst the reason we cannot be is because we don't pay attention to that intrinsic dimension of god that flows from our inside that was when the, for the first time the Holy Ghost taught me that life in the spirit begins with bodies. Nobody told me about it. Life begins with bodies. And I say, ah. So all those little, little notches that I have that I choke and put aside is what will actually take me into destiny. I was pursuing scriptures. I could quote. Sometimes I sat down and close my eyes and I'm reciting chapters in my mind. But bodies come. I didn't notice that that was the gateway to spiritual possibilities i didn't know that every time i prayed every time i studied the word of god what he went to do was to energize bodies in my spirit i didn't know it was a language and this is one of the crises of many people most of us here we are abortus of spiritual bodies you go for the crusade you thought it was about the manifestation of power meanwhile when you left that crusade there was a hunger in your spirit and then you come home you choke it after three days and you are looking forward to the next meeting so we store posters or programs in our phone but we don't know that those programs as numerous and as beautiful as they are cannot take us from one level in the spirit to another what we take from that program in form of bodies and hunger is the deposit of god in our spirit to quicken us to enter into possibilities most of us have bought those bodies and it's so pathetic the things that we waste bodies on some of us is movies and now knew why the herbalist doesn't live with men he goes to live in the bush because he knows that the greatest enemy of his spiritual progress is distraction not sin most of us the reason we we knew that we know the love of god now so much is because 
we committed sins that we know we are not qualified. So when we look at the past, we say no. If this thing is about if this thing is about qualification, there is no way we will even sit in the company of the brethren. We messed up. See, there was a time I told God that if I sin again, kill me. <laughs> I, I knew the mortars would just look at me and say, Kai, this boy lack understanding. Oh, <laughs> kill you. Even this one we are talking now, you should die. <laughs> Sometimes I say, God, if I want to think evil again, strike me with headache. <laughs> Trying to achieve spiritual realities by carnal means. Oh, the Lord. Hey. Oh, Z without knowledge. See, Lord, if I want to think, strike me with headache. Headache. You know how many headaches you have in a day? You will die. Until I understood that this thing is a protocol of life. And buttons, I began to manage them. Manage. I guided them jealously because there is no emergence in the life of any man until he gains mastery in stewarding bodies. The angel came to, in Judges chapter 13, to the wife of Manoah. He said, Israel had sinned and God left them in the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. God came to engender a new unveiling of salvation for them through Samson. But the woman that was pregnant, Angel began to give her instruction. He said, Take no wine, take no strong drink, and don't touch anything that is defied. So the hope of Israel was not in the hand of God anymore, it was in her ability to steward that which was conceived in her spirit. She is still an Israelite, she is the chosen one, so the light of ordination was upon her. But the access point into reality was what? Take no wine, drink no strong thing, touch nothing that is defied. There is no hope for Israel the day she touches a wine. So that woman can come for their gathering. And then that day they say, everybody go home with one bucket of wine. She will cry and go home. She will not touch it. Somebody may come and say, from this week to the next week, anything you want to drink is on me. Even though she feels like drinking because she's now pregnant. She is sentenced to life of taste forever. She managed that body until the thing became a child. The reason most of us can never become anything God, we know all the doctrine, we know all the scriptures, but we don't manage body. We are wasters of bodies. There was a time when the Holy Ghost came and put a body of prayer in my spirit for three months. I knew I should pray. I said, what shall we do next week? I will come to my friend and say, next week, next week, next week is 10 hours. 10 hours. Then we use that now and this, we choke this week. What we have done is that we have already wasted this week. So we channel all the energy to next week. And when next week comes, on Sunday we go to church and we come back in the evening and say, On Monday we say, no, we will start in the morning. And then we go and take a Oh, Okay, maybe we should start midweek to another midweek. And then before we know, another next week, I thought I had the luxury. Until after a while, the body fitted out of my soul. I went and locked the door and tried to pray. After 30 minutes, I don't stop. Ah, I knew I had aborted the season. Because what you don't know is that bodies are also indicators of spiritual seasons. That's why there are certain seasons you will never enter. Before you come, the alarm that a season has come upon you is that God quickens a body in your spirit. Many believers are wasters of body. And the spirits that regulate and govern the affairs in the territory, they know when light shines on a man from heaven. Because most of these things that you think are feelings, they are actually spiritual interactions. They can discern it. When a dimension of God is coming from heaven, they can sense it. They know. They know, they know, they can discern. So they come to you in form of distractions, questions that are not relevant, so that you can communicate what is your heart. And then they know. And then they fashion a weapon for you alone. It is specifically tailored for you. But you don't know that there is a politics going on in the spirit realm to choke you and to truncate you. Imagine if that woman wasted that body. In the whole clan of Israel, in that season, she was the most significant person. The reason is because she was pregnant with a dimension. Salvation of Israel was in the womb of one woman. She didn't even know what that child meant. All she had was that this child is a Nazarite. 
That's why the reason those buttons come to you. You think it's just about, I'm trying to love God now. You may not be aware that the revival that this whole territory is crying for for 50 years, the revival is now pregnant in your spirit. One man can become as important if he understands the power of buttons. Something the whole territory is crying for. God comes to you not because you are special, not because you did anything, and He impregnates you with a body. And then you think, next week too, I will pray, and you discard it. What you don't know is that you have deleted yourself from an eternal equation. Because you were an answer to a prayer of many generations. But you don't know the power. Bodings. Bodings will make you not to sleep at night. Bodings will make you to break up friendship with people that your life is weaved into. People you don't see, you can't go anywhere. But you have understood that for you to be relevant in a generation, the indicator that you are captured in eternal ordination is the kind of burden that comes to you. And let me tell you, these things are in depth. There are certain burdens that come to you for one day, some for three days, some for three weeks. Some will dwell with you for one year. Because the gestation period of burdens is a statement of the scope of that which God wants to do. But many believers are not aware. This is why, as a believer, sometimes the worst thing that happens to you is not sin. Sometimes the worst thing that happens to you is distraction. The devil knows if you sin, you will go back to one year fasting and prayer to repent. And he will not get you again for, sometimes for the whole of your life. But he can distract you consistently for one year and you will not think it's anything. Until the very verb of your soul is weakened. You can't even press into God anymore. Because you don't understand that these things are a function of demonic intelligence. They know the kind of person you are. Your conscience is potent. If they strike you with sin, they will not see you again. So they distract. Some people have been distracted for five years. They can stand up from here and go to Makodi for three days program. Oh, 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 oh. Hey, 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 hey. If they go, God. when God successfully impregnates them with a the body, as they are coming back that week, everything dissipates. It becomes a story of the things that happened in the meeting. It's a shame for a believer to talk about things that happen in meetings when it's supposed to be a manifestation of those things when we go to the height of zion we come as the manifestation of the possibilities that are in zion moses went there and when he interacted he came the bible says his face shone like the sun he doesn't need to tell you he was in the mountain of god when you look at him you know that this one was dwelling with spirits his walls become deeper than the walls of men his attitude becomes deeper than everything humankind can say. So when you look at him, you know that this one was sitting with spirits. But we, we are talkers about things. We are not manifestors. This is why we cry most of the time. Because our problem is not lack of knowledge. I told them that those days, the Bible said my people perish for the lack of knowledge. Now my people perish for irresponsibility. Have you seen people that will come to you and say, God told them they will be prophets? My friend came to me and said, God told him he is the apostle Paul of this generation. <laughs> the apostle Paul of this generation now, I don't know where he is. <laughs> you know, we like talking about big things. I, I was sleeping and an angel came and told me, you have the mantle of Benzie in Dahosa. Begin to cry. <laughs> because if truly, if truly, if truly, you are the one carrying the man to obey the Dahosa, do you know what will happen to you in eternity if you don't fulfill that mandate? Because certain men, they are gates in different dispensations. They represent certain possibilities and legislations from heaven. The reason God releases certain men is so that certain things that a dispensation should experience can be communicated through their lives. But we think this thing is about fun and it's about, about pride that we brag about and argue. We don't think from the angle of responsibility. Somebody that have never managed or incubated a body for three days is the apostle Paul of this generation. Meanwhile, if apostle Paul of this generation sit here, you will not hear anything for the next five hours. He will talk football, he will talk Arsenal, he will talk Chelsea. That's, that's how he enters. <laughs> Because he heard that everybody is carrying mantles now. Everybody now is a mantle bearer. I tried many things. I discovered they don't work. So I came back to seek God. 
I saw that certain men that saw God, they left God and still went back and they started doing these things. I'm telling you. Paul said in Galatians 1:15, he said, When he pleased the Father to reveal his son in me. So the guy had a full revelation of Jesus. I think the next thing is to go and teach. He said, I conferred not with flesh and blood. I went into Arabia. He knew the thing is not to talk about. He needed to become what he had received. You see a man who is great. The, the vastness of the man's greatness is a function of the depth of that man in the spirit. That's why we can say the same thing, but we talk from different depths and the implications are different. But how far you travel is dependent on the kind of burdens you receive and how well you steward them. Emergence begins with burdens. Most of us have aborted many bodies. The reason your prayer will have depth is not because you have spiritual lingo. The reason your prayer will have depth is because you are praying bodies that come to you from heaven. Hannah came to the sanctuary of God. She could not even communicate what was in her spirit through articulate vocabulary. The thing was so heavy that she was just chewing. And the man of God saw her and failed in the sermon. She thought she was drunk. Because in those days, the Bible said the word of God was cast. So people were no longer, spiritual interaction was lost. So people prayed that time religiously. So you can afford to come to the temple and hold the menorah and do like this. And go back home. You can even cross your leg and pray. Oh, you know, some of us, that's how we pray. Ah, Jesus, I love you. Thank you, Father. Ah, thank you for today. If not for you, Lord. Amen, amen. And we sleep. <laughs> A generation that doesn't sustain body, that's how they pray. So when Eli saw Hannah praying, she couldn't understand what's going on here. They know this can't be prayer. This is drunkenness. Meanwhile, the best kind of drunkenness is to be drunk with the spirit. <laughs> he said she was drunk. Hey! No discernment because the word of God was cast. And the woman was there, groaning and pressing on the strength of the body that was in her spirit. And such prayer, it ascends to the heights of heaven. That is how we bet things in this kingdom. First of all, for ourselves, what we are in the spirit begins to manifest. And then everything we have for our generation as an era begins to flow through us. We are a copy and paste generation because we think spiritual things are easy. We don't know the many years of travail that bet spiritual possibilities. You see somebody chanting. You now hear 10 of the messages. You too will become a chanter. <laughs> oh! If God wants to show you mercy, you will learn a lot of things in a short while. Head of Poswarume, all his prayers were territorial. Shutting the gates, opening the heavens, accessing portals. I went for a meeting when the power of God was moving. Me too, I began to shut the gates. <laughs> and when I when I shut the gate. That was, I didn't know that those gates had watchers. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, see, there are certain scriptures that I carry every day of my life because they are the reason I'm still standing. The Bible said in Lamentation, <laughs> in Lamentation chapter 3, verse 22, he said, It is for thy mercy that we are not consumed, your compassion failing not. <laughs> If you don't know those scriptures, you are in trouble. <laughs> I entered the territory. When the power of God began to move, first my steps changed. I began to move like a colossus. <laughs> Even your tongue becomes deep. My tongue became deep. Zelema Iwata Bahubela Asis. Jehuwa Hakimufa Hazuza Hak. You know? I was invoking things from heaven. He did come out so far. I joined. Oh. 
I didn't know that the man traveled in different parts in the spirit until he found his trumpet. I wanted to blow his trumpet. <laughs> when the spirits came, they said, we know that the voice resembles somebody's voice, but we don't see the signature. The signature is not... <laughs> we, we, we can't access, we don't seem to get the signature. Yes, it sounds alike, but which signature? I don't, we can't find authorization. That was, <laughs> that was when I also realized again that spirits don't interact with cognitive language, they interact with energy. <laughs> you know, when Jesus came to a place, you thought it was just by faith, say, be healed. The Bible will say, virtue flowed out of him. It is faith and virtue that produce manifestation. Faith is the opener, virtue is the actual substance. See, that's why we pray a lot. Huh? Because my brother, I had a lot of faith. I went to cripples in the public. I said, if I do it in the public, then God will honor my faith. I didn't know God was not moved, whether it is public or private. I wanted to bind territorial spirits, so they came out. So when they showed up, there was no backing from Zion. And I was light like paper. After I ran all the rat race, I came back. And when I heard this man now, I hear them differently. I will call Bishop Oedipo's messages. Ah! You needed to see me when I came for a healing service. I can quote 50 healing scriptures. Pop, pop, pop. Sometimes you can't even talk. The scriptures are too, are too many. When I started struggling, I now went back. And then I heard that he said one day he was on the mountain praying. And an angel touched his tongue and said, Today I have touched your tongue with a coal of fire. As you say it, you see it happen. And when I checked my, my, my track record, there was no time an angel touched my tongue with a coal of fire. <laughs> so I knew that was not my trumpet. <laughs> because I checked, I checked, I realized my tongue was not touched. So it would be an error to go on that path. But there is one thing that is common with every man the language of body. Moses was in Egypt, burdens awoken him. He followed that body into the wilderness for 40 years. He was still with the body. So the vastness of his ministry could not be quantified. A man managed one body for 40 years. There were not so many. Only one body for Israel. He managed it for what? For 40 years. That is a revelation of how deep the heart of Moses was. You, you have had 10 bodies this year. We can't remember any of them. Sometimes we will write it down intelligently. Intelligently. We have 10 books where we write our encounters. No one manifests. A man carried one body for 40 years. He was not attending services where he was excited. The only place where his body sentenced him to was in the wilderness. But he kept it for 40 years until God came because that thing was resonating in heaven. Hannah carried her body all her life. A point. One of the beautiful things about body is that as you press into it, it transforms you. The first time Hannah was praying, she was praying because the portions that were shared in Shiloh. Phinehas and her children received many portions. She had only one. But as she began to pray, a point came. Her prayer was no longer hers. It was what was in the heart of the father. And then she said, if you give me this child, I will give it back to you. At that point, she had become an immortal entity. All that she carries now is everything the father desires. So her life became a gate that heaven could access through to reach the earth realm. Did you see the prayer she prayed afterwards when she gave birth? Even Eli didn't have that depth. Because Eli was praying based on what she, he read from the Torah. Hannah was praying from bodies. The depth of her prayer was much more than what the high priest understood. ask you this evening what are the bodies you have aborted could that be the only thing that will make you relevant in your generation all of us we preach but our peculiarity is a function of the intrinsic operation of God in our spirit man how many seasons have you aborted because of irresponsibility 
the windows of heaven open over your head. You know for the next three weeks you should go on a retreat. But your fraternity with your friends will not let you. Your fraternity with this world will not let you. And then that window shuts. And not every window is the same. The window opens after three years again. And then the window shuts. And then you think because you are making contact with the reigning apostle you will become something. It doesn't work like that. Every man that ever became significant in his generation, there was something his spirit man was feeding on. And that thing ate their soul up if they bought it. They stay on it until it drags them into depths in God that they can't define. Most people are lost in those bodies. And the next time they appear, when you look at them, it is a strange dimension of God you see. What are the bodies we have aborted? Certain bodies, we begin to attend to it, but over time we now pull away. The gestation period is not for you to determine. It was determined in heaven before it came. And it must mature. I began my journey with God listening to men like Billy Akani. And one thing Brother Billy said that we never forget. He said when a chick hatches an egg, he sits on it until the egg becomes a chick and he breaks it. He said if the chick on the egg does not stay to the end, that egg will neither be an egg nor will it become a chick. It will be wasted. So, both things are meant to be attended to until the gestation period is over. If you leave it halfway, you will be like Ephraim that is half-baked. You will never, you will neither be what you were, nor what you should become. You become a strange creature. This is why you see many men talking God, but they are portraits of the devil. A man is leading somebody to Christ, but is leading that person to Christ to win the person's confidence so that he will sleep with her. He's talking God on his lips, but his heart is on the devil. Because they are half-baked. They will not let the burden of God on their spirit man to make them what they should become. Knowledge will not save you from this truth. It is God that makes men in this kingdom. And his protocols are rigid. The reason is because we may be a thousand in one auditorium. The story God is telling through our lives are different. At the end of the day, everything we fuse together to become one corporate expression of his reality. I told them in the Chapel of Redemption last week, this building have different dimensions, different shapes. You will look at it and admire the building, but this is actually blocks that were chiseled and mended together. For this building to be like this, some blocks were divided into two. Some were brushed away in order to fuse into this building. What God puts in your spirit and calls you to attend to is your partnership with him that will make you relevant in your generation. Men are not made because they know the Bible. You'll be shocked. Men are not made because they know to preach. Men are made because God walks through them from their inside until he breaks out of them. Because it is God himself that announces men. It's not a game of fame. It's not a game of popularity. It's not a game of intelligence. It is men becoming full expressions of different dimensions of God. So that a corporate persona will be built that can host the glory of God in a generation. The only way we can be many, unique but yet one, is when we travel the path of our bodies. It will shape us to become that fine blend that can mingle with ourselves in order to create something that is beautiful to behold. Abortors of body never become mighty in this kingdom. Even if a spirit appears to you, it will not translate to anything. It is what you do with that encounter. It is how well you manage that encounter through the body it places in your heart that will determine where you get to. There are many that have seen Jesus and became nothing. And there are many that never saw a vision in their life, yet became mighty. It's not a game of visions. Where we come to tell people how many lives 
and how many angelic beings we have seen. Appearances in the spirit realm doesn't make anybody anything. Encounters will be, be grossly limited if we don't take the responsibility of managing the deposit of those encounters in our spirits. Don't wait until your circumstance reveal to you how helpless you are. There is something currently going on in your heart. Is it good to study scriptures? Yes, we memorize many, we memorize them many times. Is it good to pray? Very important. It's a key of attending to bodies. But that thing that is rising in your heart, that little cheek that God has bettered in your spirit, nurture it. Sometimes you need to go around to study from different environments. Have you seen a pregnant woman? Her diet changes. Her desires changes. The more it may begin like a sickness because her system does not conform with it. When a body begins, it comes with laws. You may not be used to it. So you go to sleep, it looks as if you are sinning. And then you start tending to it. When a woman is pregnant, it looks as if she usually falls sick because it tries to revert her usual protocol of living. But when she realizes his pregnancy, in order to manage that child, she will commit herself to those laws that is introduced to her flesh. And over time, it becomes so strong that it conditions her appetite. There are many things she cannot as much as inhale. I went to my friend's house. I woke up in the morning. Innocently, I spread perfume and the wife ran away from the house. What happened? He said, hey, he said, I should look at this shelf. There is no perfume here. For the past, past eight months, since the wife became pregnant, perfume became a taboo in the house. The law of pregnancy. Perfume became what? A taboo. Is there anything wrong in putting perfume? In that season, yes. In the season of bodies, there are many things that are not seen, but there will be an error. It was a taboo. And today, the child has come out. The woman has reverted back to her normal self. But she didn't go back to the level where she was. Now she's a mother. When you tend to a body, there may be a point when it looks as if it has become normal, but you are at another energy level. You attend to a body and then you come. Demons you could not cast out. You speak to them and suddenly they, they are expelled. Not because of your stature, but you have entered into depths of knowledge about Christ that you didn't have. That thing educated you. It was a syllabus beyond everything you read. You cannot know about the fire enough until you go through it. You cannot know about what I know until you go through it. There are many things God wants to communicate. You can never know it unless he allows you to travel certain corridors. So he imparts his life to you as an experience. The more we are bought bodies, the more we are bought bodies, the more we remain small. Regardless of the programs we attend, the men of God that shook us, the ones we even snapped with. Those days when I was in Christ Embassy, we went for a cell leaders conference and I smuggled my way. I wanted to touch Reverend Chris by all means then, it was impossible. I smuggled my way to Reverend Tom, it was impossible. So I reached out to Pastor Ambrose in Cecily. They are members of the Central Executive Council. And then I said, sir, can I take a shot with you? He said, come on. And I snapped the picture, it was on my iPad. Everybody in church began to respect me because I snapped with Ambrose in Cecily. He didn't change anything about my life. Even when Reverend Chris himself eventually ministered to me, he changed nothing. So I now realize that even impartations themselves will translate to nothing unless we create and nurture the atmosphere of bodies that we become the ground where they germinate. There are many things God puts in your life. When He wants those things to grow, He creates an atmosphere around it. It is your tending that atmosphere that will make that impartation useful. The impartation will be a waste. The encounter will be a waste. You may end up talking about it until you wake up one day and you see white tears on your cheek. And you realize your life is gone. Have you not seen people that saw Jesus 20 years ago? And all their message was when the angel came into their bedroom and was glowing with light. Now they are 20 years, they can't go anywhere. Their soul can no longer even ascend to access God. Because everything God put in them has been choked. Aborting a body may not be a sin, but I tell you the truth, it's worse than sin. 
you will be in the kingdom but you will never become everything God wants you to be your ordination is tied to it the reason a lot of people relapse and go back into the world was because they failed to manage organic realities these things cry for expression in our spirit but we negate them they want to sentence us to different kinds of lifestyle and negate them. Men become strong when they know how to manage these matters. A point will come when certain lifestyle becomes your natural cruise mode. You don't struggle with it. It's natural. Because these bodies have educated you differently. You see a man who attends to maybe a season of his life where God places a law of prayer. And then he kept praying every day for 10 hours. And he manages that body for 6 months. Even when that atmosphere leaves, it becomes natural for him to pray for 3 hours. He has ascended. The things he will command and download from his spirit, you will long for it, you will not see it. It's time to quit copy and paste. And this public show and state management, there are realities we can handle. But it begins from inside. Pastor Chris taught us those days, he said the life is a, is a transcendent life. It flows from within out and it flows beyond your generation. But it begins here. Sometimes it's as tiny as a dot, but tend it. You'll be amazed that a mountain can be born out of a mole, depending on what you do with it. I'm just trying to introduce and time is gone. Because we now think these things are a lie. They are not a lie. 
we have violated the things that make those things to become tangible realities. Listen, I'm not going to give you a prayer point, but we'll pray for the next 10 minutes. Every one of us will zero into our spirit. And you will find out that thing that the Lord has troubled you with for the last three months. I tell you the truth, if we took a census now, you will be shocked that more than 90% of us have been irresponsible to those bodies. Some of us are sweeping the church. It's very beautiful. You will not be made from that. I'm telling you the truth. I've done it. I've washed toilets in this kingdom. It has its place. But there are many people that wash toilets. They became nothing. They can, only, they can teach you, tell you if you do this thing, you become great. That is not the only ingredient. I have washed toilets in churches too. I have decorated church. I have cleaned chairs. I see people that do the same thing amounted to nothing. I saw people that carried blocks on their head when they were building the church. Today they are no longer a church. That alone is not enough. What do you do? The Holy Ghost. When you do all of these things, you serve in the kingdom, you study the word, you pray. What the Holy Ghost does, if you notice, is that those bodies begin to become louder, louder, because those things are the compass of your destiny. I don't know what yours is, but we want to settle into our spirit this evening. Because it will come for nothing if I come here and wow you. Stir the place up and bring another impartation. You have had many of them. Have you not noticed sometimes the reason revival breaks is because people tarry for long in prayer. They pray of the point comes when they zero into their spirit and they begin to interact with eternal realities and it breaks out like a river. Find out what is it that is the burden in your heart and begin to attend to it by prayer. In the next 10 minutes, Jesus said, I have many things to tell you, but you can't bear it. It will not profit you so much. At best, I come, I speak, and you say, Oh, this man has utterance. Oh my God, what has God done to this man? Somebody called me last night and said, Man of God, who are you? I said, I'm a believer. Who are you, man of God? Are you a spirit? I said, I am a believer. But get one of those nonsense. Find your prayers in Zion. Prayers into God. Forget everybody. The Holy Ghost knows what He has impregnated you with. What is that thing that God has locked up in the chambers of your spirit? It's time to give expression to it. Too many prayer points. People are going nowhere. Some of us have become known. No. I have my own bodies. It may not profit you so much. I may cast my body on you. You will cry, but it may not profit you. What is it the Holy Ghost is speaking out of your heart?
are not religious realities. Apostle called me some weeks ago. He said, go and hide yourself. I told him I wanted to stretch myself to see the much I can carry. He said, young man, you don't know the cause of the spirit realm. He said, go and hide yourself. You will not know when it's about preaching. You can't even know when it's no longer about souls. You come, you preach, you are shouting. You don't care about the people. They will meet you with their problem. You don't have their time. You don't care. So when you are screaming, you may deceive yourself and think you have passion. It's a lie. It's so delicate. You don't know when you will deviate from your original calling. Because the life, the language of life that is coming from your spirit, you violate it. Some preach now for honorarium. They go for big meetings, they don't go for the small ones. I told you from the beginning that your score card is not on earth, it's in heaven. The reason why Mary is because they know they have to eat all their lives. All their lives. You may be doing a lot of things thinking. I was telling up the other day. I say, Oh boy. Sometimes you preach for one month, you have not put, you have not read one chapter from the Bible. Is this thing you see God you are pursuing? Sometimes you pray so that your soul will ascend to go and preach. Because you are that pressure to minister from the height where you are known from. Prayer is no longer a function of intimacy. It's now a key to performance. You will be doing the greatest spiritual things, but you are in error. Because you have violated the language of life. A spiritual prayer is prayer now becomes a key for performance. Because anytime you pray, that's when you can minister with power. And your soul can be ascended. How many of you here have searched the scriptures in recent time because you wanted to know God? Most preachers now read the Bible because they want to preach. I'm telling you what I know. This eternal. The men that are relevant with God, even in their old age, they do these things. There is an area of their life that is most rigid. It doesn't change for anything. They can have 100 engagement in three weeks. If it will affect this one, they will cancel all. The reason most men are scarce is not because they have invitation. They understand the intelligence of a shift. If we shift, they are gone. You will be doing the same thing you are doing, but every your ranking will drop. Because these are the things that define us. And if we find men who can do these things, then truly a new species of people is rising in the landscape. You may be deceived with your oratorial power. Every time you stand, you have something to say. You can even understand the psychology of believers in your generation. You know what to say to stir them. But at the end of the day, you have no message from heaven. These things, we, they are non-negotiable. I don't know what God has told you. I only came to sound an alarm in Zion. So that you will go back to what God told you, that many of you, it has even become rusty. It doesn't even mean anything to you anymore. The first time you had the encounter, it was as if your life depends on it. But now it's like, oh boy, it is now rusty. You can't even feel the energy from it anymore. Go back to it. And let's pray for the next 10 minutes. This is a ground of revival. There are certain dimensions that have broken out from this ground. Thank God one of the people that powered it is here with us. There is so much in God that we have not seen. Because we have become religious. What will make you relevant is that language in your spirit. You can follow the biggest men. If you don't find it, it will be nothing. What has God told you? What is the burden in your heart? It's time to attend to it. Can you go ahead and pray the Holy Ghost? Some of us, the burden in our heart, our souls, we have been on ground for one month. We have been in soul. Some of us, the burden is the burden for prayer. But gradually we can't pray anymore. We attend all the meetings. We are leaders in fellowships. Some of us, the burden in our heart 
cross. He knew his errand was the cross. Even though he walked in wonders and miracles, his focus was the cross. There was nothing you give him on earth that would distract him from the cross. Every man is an errand from the Father. What errand are you running from, Zion? Could it be that distraction has shut it away? Could it be that experience with sin has shut it down? Could it be that the pleasures of this life have shut it down? Could it be that even religion itself has shut it down? We have no relevance unless we know the error we have been sent. What error is from the Father? La bara savana taila, braza vanda sagla raboza gavash. Hey, word and pray. The Bible says, "Be faithful to His Spirit, serving the Lord." You may not know, you may not know, but I tell you, your significance in this kingdom is tied to those intrinsic realities. The reason you may never be a deborah in your generation is because you didn't tend bodies. The reason you may never be a poor in your generation is because you didn't tend bodies. The devil knows. The devil knows you can be in church but you will not deliver. He knows. He knows you can be in an apostolic center but you will never be relevant. Your pride may be that you are, you are not the resident pastor. Your pride may be that you are not the man that leads prayer. The devil knows. Judas was with Jesus for three and a half years. He was not relevant. The devil knows you can master church language and still not be relevant. You can become friends with the biggest man of God. You will still not be relevant. The devil knows it is spiritual intelligence. Some of us think we are growing because we have become close with men of God. Some of us think we are growing because we don't have titles. Some of us think we are growing because we are not popular. The devil knows your rank in the spirit. The devil knows you are lightweighted in the spirit. Because the things that make you, you fail to attend to them. Can you cry? Now let us embers become a burning flame again. He maketh his angels spirits. But his ministers a flame of fire. Let us embers become body flames again.
that what gives you relevance are not the men of God you are friends with. You can pick your phone and call anybody. That's not what makes you relevant. What is your popularity in the realm of the spirit? Everybody knows you, they call you names. That's not what makes you relevant. Many impartations. But how many seasons have you aborted? How many seasons? Restore my body. And there's a channel of mercy. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's an economy in God. The economy of mercy. You see, mercy is not just, it's not pity. It's not even empathy. Mercy is an economy in the spirit. There are two things mercy does. One of the things mercy does is that it causes you to enter into an accelerated possibility. So that the distance that you have lost you cover up. And it's as if nothing ever went wrong. Does for you is that it causes your seasons to come alive quickly. So that the seasons that were lost, they resonate around you. And it looks as if nothing was ever lost. Can we lift our voices now and cry for mercy? Most of us have lost many seasons, I tell you. Most of us have wasted encounters. Remember, remember. We have wasted encounters. We have lost seasons. Have mercy on your daughter. Another opportunity, Jesus. One more chance, oh Holy Ghost. Let us carry it to the night month. Don't move on from me, Jesus. Don't move on from me, oh. Don't move on from me, oh. Hey. Mercy, 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 I know mercy, you are mercy. eyeing another man, mercy, another mercy. man, another faithful I man. I pray that the Lord will put your eyes to see the weight of this matter. Don't move on from me. Don't move on from me. Don't move on from me, Holy Ghost. I know you are eyeing another girl, another lady. Who will do all your will? Please, don't move on from me. The grace maximizes seasons. In one year, you can enter three different seasons. The grace to maximize seasons. I will do better now. I will not waste it again. I will not abort again. In Jesus' name. In the precious name of Jesus. One of the problems with our generation is that we have become religious and emotional people. So we don't really know the things that are heavy in the spirit. I pray that as you go home, the Holy Ghost will continue to minister these things to your heart. See, when Judas was selling Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, he didn't know the implication. He didn't know what it meant. He didn't know. He what it meant to be the son of perdition. Okay. He sat with Jesus when Jesus said, the man that will do this, it would have been better if he was not born. But he didn't hear him. Okay. We hear different depths. If only he knew what it meant. Jesus okay. said it would have been better if that man was not born. Judas went ahead. He didn't know. The Lord will open our eyes to understand the things that matter. Ah. Hey. Jesus said that 12 peoples will sit on 12 thrones to judge the 12 tribes of Israel. The foundation of the new Jerusalem. He said the names of the 12 were inscribed on it. 
That city is built on their blood. The greatest honors in the kingdom, a man violated in his generation for 30 pieces of silver. Kai. Let's go, don't close our eyes. I want to pray for somebody tonight. There are certain seasons you will lose, you will never get it again. Jesus said concerning Jerusalem in Luke 19:44. He said there will be gnashing of teeth. No stone will be left unturned. He said because thou knowest not the times of thy visitation. There are certain visitations that you will never have. Paul, traveling with your mark alongside Barnabas, raising him to become an apostle, he violated those seasons of favor. Many years later, he was only relevant to be a deacon. There are certain seasons you lose, you will lose relevance eternally. So no matters to joke. This is why the Holy Ghost, there are certain seasons that the Holy Ghost will violate certain protocols in the spirit. Daniel was praying. The angel Gabriel came to him. He said, I was given the ability to fly swiftly to give you skill and understanding. The extra ability was given to the angel because of the urgency. Of the season. Some of us are able to sleep because we don't know the urgency of the season. I want to pray for someone that the Lord will cause you to receive the grace to maximize your seasons. I told them in Lagos, sometimes we celebrate certain things, the things we celebrate now. And it is available to us 10 years ago. Yes, yes. Sir. 10 years ago. It was released from heaven 10 years ago. We entered now. Okay. Meanwhile, where we are now, we, were, we should be there 10 years. Where we should be, we didn't contemplate it. And then we think it's the Lord need to help. Let me tell you, never take pride in the fact that you can call any man of God. It is an honorable thing. But strive for your own dimension to come find expression. Because that's what will define who you are in your generation. A lot of us are played too because we even, we have, familiarity has even destroyed us. You can come to a man of God, hey, how far? How far? What is how far? When you should be locked up in prayer and fasting. Do you know how many seasons that man has walked through to be where he is? And then you want people to know that you guys are close. You snap with them, put on Facebook. You see Lawrence in the public, you shake him and do like this. <laughs> Apostle will shake us. He will say, bro, how far? He say, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is bro? Daddy. <laughs> Lift your hands to whatever. Let me tell you, we don't qualify what we are doing. We don't qualify for what we are doing. It's a function of mercy. And that mercy can be available to anybody. I keep telling people, nobody is special. It is the God on our inside that is special. Our commitment to Him is what makes us become like Him. It is not a glorious thing that they are hearing of one person everywhere. It's a shame to the church. Yes, 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 yes. The labor is too much. Okay. There are no voices. Okay. And then one person rises, he's happy. Hey, oh boy, it's a pity. But the problem is that the men that should rise, they have not the responsibility for their lives. We are satisfied going for meetings, snapping pictures with people. Men in this season. God is raising men in this season. I want to pray for the grace to maximize the season. So you don't lose out. The people you are hearing today, let me tell you something. They don't, they are not even, they don't even have an idea what God wants to do. It's only a privilege of ordination for us to cry to reawaken many. The men that will be the wonder of this generation, you'll be shocked that some of them are seeing the beer panels. Something will break out of some of you here. 
and you will be the spectacle of this generation. You think it's about the people preaching. These men are just called to blow the trumpet. The carriers of the possibilities of this generation. We have not even seen them. A time we call when a man will be singing praise and worship. Praise and worship. Everybody in the church will leave and enter another, 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 another dimension. Then you understand? The people crying, they are the least on this cadre. It's a privilege of ordination just to awaken others. You don't know what God can do through you. Sometimes your imagination is the quality of the dimension of God that can break out through you. You'll be sure of the men preaching can't even imagine what you are imagining. Yes, 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 yes. But will you allow the Lord to sanctify you? Lift your hands toward heaven. Precious Holy Spirit. Precious Holy Spirit. We came with different expectations, but Lord, you have come with an emphasis. We receive it with a heart of meekness. And as we lift our hands toward heaven, we ask for the release of grace to maximize the seasons of our lives. Lord, we have lost many seasons. We are aware. We have lost many seasons. Where we are now, we know we should be father. We thank you for where we are. But Lord, we ask for the grace to maximize the seasons, the graces, and the possibilities. Just stay still before the Lord.
Bro, stop the keyboard so that. Thank you. I don't want us to get loud. Just focus on God for a moment. I want you to be able to download it. Because I notice usually that when people begin to fall and scream, then most times we lose a lot of things. Just suck into God. Allow it to seep into you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Some of you, your hunger, sir, your hunger is, being, is being restored. Hunger. Hunger for God now. It's being restored. Precious Holy Spirit, blow upon them. Blow upon them. I stare that hunger. I stare that holy fire. I stare that holy fire. Oh! People with strange capacity for prayer that have lost it. See, there is fire coming on you. There is fire. There is literal fire. Literal. Literal fire coming on you. Literal. Literal fire. Literal fire. Holy Ghost! Super. Holy Spirit, I stand the intercessors. Litra fire, intercessors, watchers over territories, men that have been numbered by ordination to be gatekeepers. I challenge the spirit of slumber out of them. Let the fire of revival begin to engulf them. Litra fire. There's a sound breaking from heaven upon someone. There's a sound. You are hearing that sound. You are hearing it now as if it's very audible. Let it break out of your power. Let the sound break out. I'm seeing men now receiving connection back to the spirit realm. Men are being reconnected. Some of you as children, as children, you can sense the angels that you walk with. But there was disconnection. Right now I speak by the road of a higher priesthood. Let there be a reconnection. Holy Spirit, touch them and stay. Let spiritual interactions begin. Make contact with Zion. When you are there, 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 when you are there. When you are there, when you are there, when you are there, when you are there, when you are there. I've seen a vision in the spirit. I've seen young men walking and becoming old as if they are bent over. Ancient spirit of wisdom coming upon people because of interaction with spirit beings. When you are there, when you are there. When you are there, 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 when you are there. When you are there, when you are there, when you are there, when you are there. Just place your hand on your forehead, your right hand. I see people increased. We 
with spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence. Spiritual intelligence. You can tell people what to do to experience promotion in every aspect of their lives. You can decipher the, the challenge of a generation and provide solution. Spiritual intelligence is a grace the Lord is downloading on people now. Father, Father, let that grace begin to rest. No longer talking many things in order to make sense. Definite in the spirit. Articulate utterance. That dispel this darkness and bring light. Spiritual intelligence. I speak now, Holy Ghost. From the left to the right. From the front to the back. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Spiritual intelligence. Yeah. 